Okay. Um, good afternoon, um, everyone. Um, so as I've been introduced, I'll be speaking on the application of medicinal plants in traditional and modern medicine. So um, in this presentation, I'll give a brief uh, background of medicinal plant history and their current status in the market. Um, so, um, sorry about that. Just want to move some few things here. So African medicinal plants. Um, um, so our African continent um, is believed to be the cradle of humankind. And um, just a quick one here. I'm just trying to sort out some few things. Uh, just apologies for that. Just want to quickly unshare um, and share again the screen. Um, is my screen shared? Yes, yes, it is. OK, thank you so much. Um, so the African uh, continent is believed to be the cradle of humankind and its use of uh, traditional medicine is also believed to be one of the oldest and most diverse therapeutic systems. So the continent and um, has a long history of healing art that dates back to 3200 BC in the ancient Egypt. The ancient African healers used uh, mixtures of various herbs, um, animal parts, minerals, and clay. Uh, and the use of medicinal plants was the most common um, practice um, in Africa. And um, because of this, um, it is because Africa has a, a very uh, biodiverse um, uh, flora and uh, it has more than 5,000 medicinal plants that are used uh, for health benefits. So the use of uh, traditional medicine is still a common practice even in the 21st uh, century uh, for majority of the African population. And according to the World Health um, Organization, it is assumed that about 80% of the African population is still reliant on traditional medicine for their healthcare needs. Um, the, the reliance on traditional medicine um, has generated a multi-billion um, dollar, um, um, sorry, a multi-billion um, rent industry in South Africa. And these plants are harvested from the wild and sold in the streets by the healers, or unfortunately people that might have limited knowledge of the medicinal plants. So these medicinal plants are sold as dried material, ground powder, or prepared as concoctions. Over the years, we have seen a change in uh, traditional medicinal plant industry from plants being sold as crude um, or unprocessed products to now being marketed as herbal supplements that are processed into capsules, uh, tablets or ointments. Um, interestingly enough, uh, some of the bioactive compounds in medicinal plants are now produced as prescription, prescription drugs which contain uh, purified ingredients that is regulated by the SAPRA in South Africa. For example, we've got morphine, a common um, a, a medicinal, a common drug that is used to uh, treat moderate or severe pain. Um, the extent of the medicinal plant benefits has been observed in a relatively new booming industry of nutraceuticals. So nutraceuticals are defined as food or part of a food that provides medicinal or health benefits, including the prevention, uh, prevention or the treatment of a disease. They are classified into dietary supplements, um, functional foods and personal care. So nutraceuticals may be used in, to improve one's health. They delay aging processes, uh, prevent chronic diseases, increase life expectancy, or they just support the structure or, uh, or function of the body. While in the past, uh, dietary supplements mostly contained specific vitamins or minerals, um, but now uh, these dietary supplements can contain one or more plants either vegetables, fruits, protein-based crops, or medicinal plants. And also some of the food is now being fortified, um, not only with these vegetables, 
or protein uh, based crops, but now one can use uh, medicinal plants. For instance, you can see there's a marula and raisin rusk that um, recently came to um, a spa outlet. So the dietary supplement uh, market is expected to show an accelerated um, growth rate from um, $123 billion market size to an, ex an, an expected uh, $288 billion market size by 2030. Um, there's a number of factors that is driving this accelerated growth, which include the demand for sports nutritional supplements, the healthcare and wellness, um, the prevalence of chronic diseases and disorders, and the need for a balanced diet. So if we look at the case of Moringa, um, a widely used medicinal plants globally at, at this point, its market value was valued at over 1.3 billion um, US dollars in 2021. And now it is expected that the market will reach a value of 2.9 billion US dollars by 2031. However, um, Africa actually, um, Africa and the Middle East are the least contributors to the uh, Moringa supplement um, market. Um, we can see there with the red arrow that show just the, 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 the growth rates of the market for the Middle East and Africa relative to Europe with the gray um, uh, bar and um, North America with that um, uh, bluish uh, bar. So um, another industry that has shown a potential um, accelerator, accelerator growth is the cosmeceutical industry. Uh, cosmeceuticals are defined as products that incorporate biologically active products um, with medicinal or drug-like uh, benefits that is intended for tropical application and the mucous membrane of the oral ca cavity. Um, so the market's trajectory um, uh, for the industry has shown an increase um, gains over the years with the personal care uh, product market valued at um, 18 billion US dollars in 2021 and is expected to reach a height of 40 billion dollars by um, uh, US, US dollars by 2029. Um, so some of the factors that are driving the the growth um, in the, the growth in this market includes uh, include the rising awareness of skincare uh, routine, the innovative product uh, branding, and advertising strategies. Uh, so now the in this table uh, we did some online searches for South African branded cosmeceutical products that are formulated from indigenous medicinal plants by our own South African SMMEs. We found quite a number of these products developed uh, for skin care, hair care and cleansing uh, products. Since these products are sold online and in the South African market, there are some products though that are even sold internationally due to the benefits of um, online shopping. And um, this might be a start to South Africa contributing um, already formulated products instead of exporting raw and unprocessed medicinal plants um, internationally that are once uh, that when they're developed, then they um, they cost South African exorbitant amount of funds. So uh, our take home message um, that I'll bring to the to the audience is um, from now on, I would like us to see medicinal plants beyond the plants that are sold in the so-called black market, but as an opportunity, an opportunity and a form of income generation for South Africa and other African um, countries. We need to start make uh, start making our own products that, with time, are able to compete um, with big with big brands like your L'Oreal, your Nivea, your Clinique, and your Garnier. So this can only be achieved if Africa um, develops their own products and they're able to generate um, IPs and patents. So with that, I'd like to um, end my presentation here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. We've learned a lot um, from your presentation. Um, 